Welcome to this conference entitled Urban Landscape, Essay of Definition of an Algerian Vernacular Style Among Students in Architecture. I'm proud to present this work as part of Contemporary Architecture and Urbanism in Mediterranean and Middle East Conference 2020. My name is Nabil Rubai Shorfi, and I'm a lecturer at Abdelhamid Ibn Badis University in Algeria, in a city on the Mediterranean coast called Mostaganem. To understand our approach, we must explain the state of mind of the students with whom we conducted this research, in particular asking questions about their sense of belonging and their relationship to space. Thus, apart from the patriotic feeling which qualifies each Algerian with its unifying elements and its divergent particularities, each Algerian is aware that what characterizes him goes beyond the simple belonging to a nation, an origin and a religion. Each Algerian is aware of his complex membership and his protein cultural environment, so he defines himself as North African, Berber, Sub-Saharian, Turkish or Andalusian origin depending on particular family histories. He also defines himself as Maghribian by emphasizing the points in common with Morocco and Tunisia. He is very aware of his Africanness, but feels more Mediterranean turned towards the sea. Belonging to a large Maghreb linked by particularities such as the history of the extension of Islam, the common past of colonized people linked, however, to the colonizer of the other side. It is within the framework of this observation that we undertook to dissect and understand the process of identification and use of the architectural style among architecture students. This research carried out with Algerian architecture students in a didactic framework aims to demonstrate the process of defining architectural bias in the Algerian and by extension Mediterranean urban landscape. We thus asked ourselves the question of the levels of the architectural bias in connection with the immediate environment and the representation of a broader style that would borrow from the large world that constitutes the imagination of the students. And now, Muslim words, Westernism, Mediterranean. For this, and before telling you about the approach taken, we will describe the urban environment in which our students evolve. Many Algerian cities no longer have their own character despite the regional climatic and socio-cultural particularities. The old urban fabrics are gradually transformed into precarious housing zones, concerned by policy of resorption which disintegrated them, annihilating any historical anchoring in a style that one could qualify as Mediterranean or Algerian. Mostaganem is made up of a concentrate of historical testimonies of architecture and town planning dating from the Almoravid period. And through the presence of the Zionids of Tlemcen, then the Marinids of Fez, then the Ottoman period, which left many buildings and districts still inhabited. French colonial period with a spectacular evolution of imported and adapted styles branching from classicism to modernism. Through the Arab Moorish style linked to the eclectic plotting and the Art Deco style which has given exceptional monuments. However, government policy has failed to give importance to urban heritage just like the intangible heritage which has disintegrated over the years. Thus, in the same way that it becomes difficult to speak of intellectual proliferation in Algeria, it becomes ever more difficult to identify the significant buildings of a historical evolution and of an architectural language viscerally of the place, so much the ravage of time or deliberate and institutionalized denial have physically or mentally erased all traces of the past. Recent architecture rarely testifies to a desire to research and anchor in the urban and cultural heritage turning it, its back on the precarious Arab and Ottoman heritage and ignoring the colonial heritage by its ideology of denial. The resulting buildings are devoid of identity, mostly built without architects when it comes to individuals, and often of unfinished, giving a characteristic landscape of concrete structure and red bricks. When the sponsor is the state, autocratic decision-making, the least cost policy, and the lack of architectural culture, decision-makers, and complicit architects result in buildings of uncertain taste, yielding to the Arab Moorish pastiche representative of an image of power in search of identity anchoring. Our methodological orientation aims more to the behavior of the students concerning the determination of the style in the design than the modeling of the process which underlies this formalization. 
To this end, grounded theory is a research methodology that focuses on the modelable interactions that manifest themselves through patterns of social behavior within a specific group. By theorizing, we are certainly not targeting the theoretical model, but rather the process to arrive at an understanding of new phenomena. Blending into the community so that its members act naturally is easy because of our relationship with the environment. We stayed in our teaching posture while trying to have a better observation of the situation. It was thus necessary to operate phases of distancing from the study framework to immerse ourselves in the data to understand what is happening and to be able to write about it. Field work involves active looking, improving memory, informal interviewing, writing detailed field notes, and perhaps most importantly, patience. Our observation sample is large, made up of meetings included in our regular practice of workshop teaching. We did not develop a selective method, but we looked at two years of observation while we were concerned with the teaching of the second year which addresses the habitat. To this, we have added more prolonged observation and not taken over several years concerning the end of studies, projects and outgoing students. The operation goes beyond observation. It includes spontaneous conversations, questionnaires, interviews and discrete forays linked to didactic techniques specific to the teaching of architecture. Information gathered from various techniques is recorded. A diary or a logbook is almost always used to keep records of observation and conversation. This is a page from our diary illustrating a note taken during a discussion session with the students around their projects. This is an initial phase of so-called open coding in red. This is another page from our diary. Moreover, we have relied on specific software for the qualitative analysis of large bodies of texture, graphical, audio and video data. It should be known that the coding in the methodology of the grounded theory aims at conceptual abstraction by attributing general concepts, codes, to singular incidents in the data. This is an illustration of software processing in the open coding phase. A triadic structure appears by processing the data from the participant observation, relating three postures for the students in the phase of defining the architecture bias. This structure is paradigmatic in the sense of grounded theory at the moment when we notice a saturation of the phenomenon, that is to say a status quo of behavior towards the search for references. This structure links or opposes three influences which appear systematically among the students as justification for the stylistic choices and the spatial and architectonic approach of the proposed art artifacts. We can consider architectural syncretism as a process of balancing and merging in the designer of mixing or integrating religious activities and symbols, traditions, cultural practice and adaptation to the environment. From a formal point of view, this process involves abandoning descriptive and prescriptive design in favor of speculative representation. The proposed forms are illusions to the reference elements of Arab Moorish architecture translated by manipulable abstractions. The symbolic weight of the Arab Moorish is all the more supported that it's expressed in the student in a refined version, signifying his displacement from symbol of history to symbol topical. It's no longer a question of manipulating frozen elements copied from old architecture, but of reviving and unifying language. Belonging to a Mediterranean sphere which goes beyond ethnic and religious filiation is a subject present in the debates of the students around their projects. They do not reject the idea of a unifying and evolving style as an alternative solution to the radicalism of the Arab Moorish bias. For the students, it's about trying to minimize the ideological impact induced by stylistic choices, sometimes perceived as radicalized. The aesthetics of Bousharabia only temporarily impact the reception of the stylistic message distilled by the student before there is critical reaction to the impertinent use of the offbeat architectonic. However, this geographic orientation would tend to erase local disparities and particularities in favor of a stereotypical and manifling vision. Students then tend to identify real points in common between the different architectures of the Mediterranean basin while translating them in a simplifying way. An increasingly recognized architect and writer, Fernand Poulon has accomplished most of his work in Algeria. 
His works are just beginning to be rehabilitated by the authorities, but he is highly regarded in academia. When they are introduced to, to the course and the work of this architect, students consider his approach and his prolific work as a treatise on Algerian architecture, tinged with backward glances and progressive interpretation. They see its architecture as a pan-Arab-Mediterranean form of expression, linking the elements of a local architecture to a modernizing vision yet at odds with the modernist doxa of the clean slate. Much more balanced, André Ravero and his quest for preservation and purism exercised exclusively in historic sites. The most meticulous references evoke Hassan Fathi and his work Gorna. So, in summary, it's first of all the cultural influence of ethnic and religious affiliation akin to Arab Moorish architecture. The occurrences that stand out are directly linked to the elements of identification of the Arab Moorish style of Andalusian influence, as well as certain elements of Oriental architecture sometimes contradictory with the history of Algeria or its climate, Musharabia, Malkaf, Iwan. If the design effort translates into a process of conceptualizing architectural elements with the aim of adapting them to a contemporary modern vision, the facilities offered by digital tools and online libraries sometimes give rise to eclectic works made of combinations without harmony, like the Arab Moorish architecture pronounced in the official buildings of the country or the typical tourist sites that we find in some Arab countries. Second, the geographical influence linked curiously to disparate architectures, some local Mozambique architecture, Kasbah, and other certainly Mediterranean but rather distant wild houses of the Cyclites, stereotypes of Mediterranean architecture. Finally, the scholarly influence through the use of recognized and personified architecture, the work of Fernand Pouillon, the influence of André Ravero, the aura of Hassan Fethi. However, in the latter case, the manifestation of a typical behavior toward the style and the process of justification goes more through the speech and the argument than through the real graphic expression. Students generally proceed by association of ideas and in the case of architectural composition by combination of architectural elements. Each axis of development calls on the domain of exploitation and this iteratively. For example, when the student reflects on his identity belonging, he will exploit the architectural elements which recall his Arab, Islamic or Berber identity. Iteratively, when the student reflects on the geographic context, he adds to the fragmented elements a semblance of unity through geographical and climatic references. Then, we noted that they justified this process by relying on the rare theorists and practitioners of Algerian architecture who still have an audience with academics. However, these architects themselves drew their references from a mixture of local and less local architectural elements. The following figure attempts to summarize what we have called levers conditioning the behavior of students towards the referenced creation. We notice that the choice regarding references exacerbates the orientation of belonging and vice versa. Thus, it is the universalist posture that is to say a choice of contemporary architectural expression devoid of heritage traces, which will push the student to self-referencing, mainly relying on his capacity to invent. By symmetry, it is the desire to belong to a culture and to express it, in other words, by esprit de corps, that the student will tend towards a heteroreferencing drawing on a large panel of stereotypical architectural elements. Finally, let us note that esprit de corps is a collective behavior marked by the search of for identifiable and appropriate resources, while the universal posture remains personal and will draw on the specific expression of each student. The artifacts are affected by it between uniformity and exuberance of features on one side and diversity and sobriety of features on the other. I thank you for your attention and your patience while hoping to have been clear and that the subject will have attracted your curiosity. Goodbye.